I agree with some people that were saying that they should swap out Damon Lillard for Dwight Howard. What do y'all take? Oh, hell no. What? What do you take tonight? Please hit the button on this guy here, bro. Top of the top, y'all, and welcome back to another episode of Cut the Cat. You already know we your host. I go by the name of Status. What's good, y'all? You already know. It's your boy, your favorite, the one and only, Bashwell. What's going on, y'all? It's your boy, Strategic. What's good, y'all? It's Google 5. I want to speak with myself. <laughs> Hey, yo, fellas, talk to me, man. What y'all week was like? <laughs> uh, Does anybody man. care to speak about that week? I'm looking at, I'm looking at five hoodie. Why it's so tight? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not allowed to talk unless. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> All right, fellas, today uh, we're going to talk about signing a record deal. All right, I know y'all probably like, what? What kind of topic is that? Well, let's get into it. Y'all know Meek Mill, right? The rapper? Mm-hmm. All right, well, yep, he is back <laughs> in the news. <laughs> okay, Meek Mill said, I haven't got paid from music and I don't know how much money labels make off me. I need a lawyer ASAP. He tweeted that, right? You know wow. what I'm saying? And then he, he said... Got, oh, he ain't got a lawyer? He said he needs a lawyer ASAP. I'm saying, though, he ain't, a, he ain't got a lawyer already? Yeah, that's the word. Hold on, that doesn't make... Yeah. I, I, it, it, you know what's so crazy? There's more to it, though. This is We're about to get into it. And then he tweeted after that, I asked the record label, how much money have you spent on me as an artist? Then how much do, have you made off me as an artist? I'm about to make my record deal public by Monday just to let the world see what these people on, right? So he said that, and then Keisha Cole jumped in, and she said, if I could scroll down, okay. Trying to see through the mask, okay. Then Keisha Cole said, I never received a check from any record label, period. But I just thought about that the other day. It's nothing wrong with obtaining audits, attorney, so that you're aware of where every dollar went. Trust me, a lot get lost in the sauce. So, fellas, I want to ask y'all a question, bro. How do you feel about record labels? And artists, matter of fact, I can't even say record labels, artists not knowing what their deal is. And what can they do to prevent this from happening? Because this is an ongoing thing with many different rappers. Um, Off the top, number one, how to prevent this. This is a no, like, this is a no brainer. <laughs> Have a lawyer, number one. <laughs> like, I don't understand how you're doing okay. any business in any industry without a lawyer. Right. How do you, for one, how do you move without having a contract? Right. That has stipulations. How do you work for somebody without knowing how much you're getting paid? Right. Well, even if you're getting paid, yeah. what if you sign the contract that said you don't get no money? You've just been doing all this. Hold up, wait a minute. Y'all thought I was finished? <laughs> what? I, right, I thought we was moving like a boss. 
That was that's not a boss. <laughs> I think I mean I think even you as a worker circle, oh you would have had well, you know the the, the rest of the application and the you never know, how much you get paid. Ah oh, man, I think okay. we need to give Meek and Keisha Cole one of our cards and they need to join the game. <sighs> I ain't gonna lie, I'm, uh-huh. I'm shocked to hear Keisha Cole say. She ain't never received a check in her life. I mean, that's not crazy. That is, that is very much crazy. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Uh, these ain't really the, 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 these ain't the type of artists that you would figure be having those type of problems. Yeah, this is true. You, you would think it might be, you know, the artists that's being shelved or the artists, you know what I'm saying, that's at the bottom of the roster. I mean, I, I, I wouldn't. But I'm saying, like, Kendall Shutt, you know what I mean? I mean, you got to be prepared. You got to be... You got to be... You got you to gotta be ready. You got to have your lawyer on deck, your accountant, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, you got to have all that ready, locked in, ready to go. But, I mean, I understand both sides of the fence, though, you know what I mean? Because when you young, you coming out the hood, you know what I'm saying? Right. You throw a few dollars in your face, you know what I mean? You... You thinking you out of here, you know what I'm saying? So you, you right. Most people ain't thinking twice about signing on that dollar. Yeah, because I mean, you're eating, you're eating fried bologna, you know, roaches in your cornflakes, and now here's a hundred thousand. <laughs> Circle. Please adjust oh. triangle when talking to me or asking me questions. <laughs> okay, no, no, I'm serious. No, a lot of um. A lot of uh, artists don't really read their contracts, and then the lawyers probably um, most of their lawyers be with from the record label more or less. So of course, you uh-huh. know they they're not gonna like divulge all the information properly. So yes, like uh, Strategic said, most people need to to hire an outside lawyer, like an entertainment lawyer, to look over their. Yeah, you contracts. know what's crazy? I never understood that because five just hit something on the nose. A lot of labels do have yeah, you know, they their own lawyers on deck mm-hmm. that they you know. But that to me, that's a conflict of interest. So how is that? How well, you is can, that even allowed? Like, like, that should be not in Well, they make you. They make you feel like you cho- <laughs> chose the lawyer when the, when they kind of on the payroll for the label. Like, or they refer you, you to these five lawyers. You get what I'm saying? And then no, yeah, yeah, you could. No, no, I, I, I get all that. But again, like we talking about, if I'm seventeen. Mm-hmm. 18 years old and I'm I was just on a corner yesterday or I was just on a, in, in the hood trapping and I'm saying like and now I'm sitting in the office and you talking about a few milli I, I, majority of people I don't think is thinking about all that shit. I'm saying like, hey you they signing that thing right away right they 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 don't go more but another thing, status yeah. is that um, like when because if you notice, make- a lot of those artists that you my fault, because not to yeah. cut you off, but a lot of those artists, when they do realize that shit, is later on in their careers, like yeah, when they get older. I was just about to say that they've been making. It's not like they wasn't getting paid, so they didn't think much of it because they was getting paid. Right. So when they're making way more money than they they, you know, used to or coming from the hood, like they're not even thinking about it. But when they get into the business aspect and start signing endorsement deals and other deals. And now later on in their career, they're like, oh, I want to get my masters back. I want to go over this deal. I'm not signed into a label. I want this type of deal. I want that type of deal. Whereas early on, you just wanted the bread. So then you get stuck for like five, six albums. And then they, you know, the label hold on to you after your third album or whatever the case may be. But, uh, right. yeah, that's, that's, that's a, that's what you call a fool and somebody that <laughs> business. That happens to like almost every rap artist though, like literally. Yeah, the ones that's fools and no, don't understand. every artist. Yeah, they, they all don't. They all fools and don't understand business. It's simple. Yeah, it's a fact. If you're doing anything and it's time for you to get paid, bro, you look for your contract. I know, I know, an artist personally, personally, who had to go through that same situation. Mm-hmm. Everybody can't sign. The label said, "Yo, we got the lawyer." They got mad at him because he did not want to deal with the lawyer for the same reason. For, um, for um, status said. Like yo, that's con. Just you work for them. I got my right. own, and it was a and it was a big 
problem to where they was like, yo, money, all right, money going to be a little bit different. You know what I'm saying? If you don't do this, then you got to pay for this, 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 this. Okay? Mm -hmm. If you got a lawyer, then you ain't got to do none of that. So, like, nah, bro, that, that joint is real. At the end of the day, yo, no, don't step outside unless you know how much you're getting paid for. That's simple. Right. Nah, I agree. I I agree with that, but but I don't think <clears throat> I don't think everybody in that position is so called is a so called fool. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I think that could go, you know what I mean, for some people, but I don't think that's the case for everybody. You know what I'm saying? I think listen, again, like we just spoke on, if you if you out here starving, you know what I'm saying? And you going day to day, you know what I'm saying, and you got an opportunity to change your life overnight. I think that. there's a lot of people now. I'm saying that won't blink twice in order to do that. Yeah. You feel right. Me? No, that, I mean that, that, that's understandable, but that, that that still don't even take away from the regular bro. Just make sure your paperwork is right. I think we no, all listen. That's a fact. Like I, I'm not disagreeing with what you're saying, Killer. I'm just saying the reality of it, though. Now I'm saying we understand. You no. Know, <laughs> And I, 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 I'm sure, you know, y'all can attest to this. Some of y'all can attest to this. I know Bash know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Listen, I've been a means. You know what I'm saying? I've been, listen, they butter you up. They mm -hmm. they come out with the bubbly. You know what I'm saying? They they they, they talk all, all the good shit, all the, you know what I mean? We're going to make you a star. We're going, you know what I'm saying? We're going to give they you this you advance, and we're going to do this and put you with this person. Right. Yeah, they, sell you, they sell you a dream. You know what I'm saying? And the, to most people, you feel me? That that's all they want. Know what I mean? So you sell them that. You put that in front of them. Know what I'm saying? With some zeros and some commas behind it. Yeah. No, I, I, I think at that moment. Know what I mean? At that moment, I don't think your mind is is. It's it's not you're thinking about you thinking about you thinking about your future. You think about how your life is about to change. You know, right. you think about all that and I, and the hand that and I, you know. I definitely understand that, but it's like playing basketball and understanding understanding fundamentals. You still got the fundamentals. When you was a striving artist, yo, we all been through it. Yo, bro, everybody know the first thing they said, yo, make sure you got that lawyer. Make sure you got the man. Yo, <laughs> that, yo man, Bash, though, remember Bash? Kevin Rivers, Apple. Right. We had an right. Apple distribution. Right. Yo, just the paperwork that we had. We ain't know. Yo, make sure we got that lawyer. Right. We ain't want to school for the new sense that we was about to get. So it's like, bro, we understand when that when that situation come, yo, oh, it's go time. Oh, but don't forget the fundamentals. I'm talking to artists now. Don't forget the fundamentals, y'all. Get yeah, that for you. This is my thing too, though. Like, that's a dangerous game to play too, though, because you a guppy. You know what I'm saying amongst shark. Like, you know, all, you these, uh, all these uh, m a majority of entertainment lawyers. Listen, this is. Mm -hmm. Just because you go get a lawyer don't mean you getting a good lawyer. No, hell no, right, you man. right. But at that, least you that got don't mean you getting a lawyer. That, yeah, that don't mean you getting a lawyer that got your best interest. And in money and back in payment from that same record label. So now you got to worry about the lawyer. I'm saying you got to worry about the label. You got to worry about oh, the lawyer you play in the position. Know what I'm saying because he handling a lot of your business. Know what I'm saying that's true. You get an that's accountant. True. You got to worry about the. You feel me? That that's. That, true. that's that's dangerous muddy waters that you treading into that all them people, you know what I'm saying, are professionals at. That's and 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 that and that's the scariest thing when you try to go in that water by yourself without a floaty. Right. You gonna, yo, bro, like I'd rather go in there with somebody that knows something than me going in there with no knowledge and I'm sitting at a table, like you know, whoa, you was at the table with these big wigs, he's talking and, 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 and man, right. they took numbers in these and I'm sitting here doting and they know I'm dolo, so now they really gonna take advantage of you. Listen, my advice. We talking about. So I hate my phone. My, my advice, speaking from firsthand experience, I wouldn't even. This is me personally. I wouldn't even fuck with a major. That's just my opinion. I think nowadays, artists have a gazillion resources to be able to do things on their own. Right. You know what I'm saying and benefit more from it. You know, you ain't got to worry about, you know, the, you, you know, the middle man and, the, and, and third and the fourth and the blah, blah, you know what I'm saying? Like, you just got to make sure you're B.I. right. 
but y'all got, and I'm saying, the tools with, with just social media alone. Know what I'm saying, like, you don't need these labels. So, so Mark, yeah, yeah, of course, you know, they're going to push you. <laughs> they're going to put a big machine behind you, of course, without question, know what I mean? But that's only if they really do believe in you. Know what I'm right. saying? You mm-hmm. might just get signed, and them niggas might throw you on the shelf with the rest of them niggas. Yeah, you just a tax write-off. What's going on, y'all? So we're going to dive into this very, very hot topic that a lot of people, maybe a lot of podcasters, don't want to talk about. They try to get away from this, um, anything that's dealing with, you know, the LGB and anything dealing with gays. And it's, it's a hot topic, you know, so you really got to watch what you, what you say. But we're going to talk about David Chappelle. Now, as we know, David Chappelle came out with a, a stand-up comedy called The Closer, and, and Netflix picked it up. It was a, it was a big. I mean, I seen it myself. It, the people have mixed. Can views. I say something real quick? It was. I think he had a deal with Netflix to to, to do a certain amount of stand-ups. They didn't, I don't think they picked it up. I think they already had it set up for him. But. Yeah, it was five. It was five. Well, I mean, I mean, when I say picked it up, I mean like they they might have been one of the only platforms that would give him the contract based yeah. on what he is, you know what I'm saying? Oh, because yeah. this topic is so hot. And as we all know, David Chappelle has been dealing with this this battle against transsexuals mm-hmm. or transvestites or whatever, you know, whatever term you want to use. But they called him transphobic for another stand-up comment that he did years ago. Sticks and stones. And sticks and stones, exactly. And when you look at this stand-up comedy on Netflix, The Closer, I feel what David Chappelle is saying. If you did not watch it all the way through, mm-hmm. please do not judge. Please don't go for what somebody just said or a clip. And, I, and I, to be honest, you got to watch the whole thing to really get his point. You can't just watch a clip on YouTube and try to say, oh, no, I'm not watching this, because you would definitely miss out on a lot of things that he has spoke about. And I'm not saying that David Chappelle is right or wrong, but, you know, this is Cut the Cabin. We keep it official. Oh, and wow. we're going to speak about, I'm, I'm hoping everybody did see it, we're going to speak about how we felt. This is my question to y'all. How did, one, first question, let me go question by question. One, did y'all all see The Closer? Is there? Hell yeah. The close, the, the entire, how, that's the farm in the joint? No, no, no. Well, that's, that's the, the whole stand-up. Up. Get to that. The whole stand-up. Oh, the whole stand? I didn't see the whole entire thing, but... Okay, so... For, for hop in, hop in, um... Bashing and Google, y'all did see it, so y'all, y'all would pretty much... Y'all more... Y'all would more know what I'm trying to get to. Okay. Please say uh, circle and square. Thank you. Circle and square, I'm sorry. <laughs> Actually, you shouldn't speak unless you were spoken to, honestly. Okay. So, therefore... <laughs> I like this. We're gonna do this more often. Um, so in this in this stand-up comedy, people say David Chappelle pushed it too far where he they felt he was talking about this one particular topic on yeah. the trans and how they said that he was transphobic. And they felt like throughout his whole show, it was just trans, 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 trans. Do y'all feel that way? Uh, let me go first, Bash. Um, yeah, yeah, sure. It doesn't matter. It's a stand-up. He, that's the whole thing of stand-up. He was giving his point of view. Um, so you're saying you did see it. You, you felt that way. You felt that he was pushing trans through the whole... I, I think he talked about it because it was a popular issue that they were blaming him from, and he's definitely one to address his issues through his comedy. So, yes, the whole thing revolved okay. around how they look at him as being transphobic. But then... If you actually watch it, he broke down that he isn't and that he's more uh-huh. like a, a womanist, like he's more pro-women. And he, he breaks down how he even has transphobic, I mean, transgendered friends and actually put them on in the business. And, mm-hmm. and he, he exposed how the community even treat their own. And I think that was more the issue that he made some good key points to the point where like they don't like him because he made those points in such a professional manner. He wasn't sitting up there just talking crazy left and right about him. He literally broke down an entire segment in his story, explaining things in his story, making it funny, and they somehow still feel offended when it was about, you know, the, the, you know, a transgendered, um, 
transgender woman and how she committed suicide based upon her own um, community turning on her because she supported somebody that was straight, that does comedy. That And then this is my thing. Sorry, I'm long-winded with this one. Yeah, they mm-hmm. want to be treated so... They want to be treated like everyone else, but then when they're treated like everyone else, they complain. Nobody's okay, complaining. I'm, yeah, my bad. I'm, I'm going to shut up. No, 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 no. So this, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because that... And I'm not cutting you off because you could continue talking, but this is that is a very, very good point. And I think that that is one of the reasons why I picked this topic today. Because I I hear all I hear with both I hear what both sides are saying. And it seemed like whenever right now this whole LGB and everything is being pushed on many platforms, you're looking at shows now, movies, everything, music. Everything, they, they, they're really pushing it. I have no problem with it being pushed either. My thing is, we all throw shots. C- comedy is comedy. You know what I'm saying? They sit there, David Chappelle get there and talk about the white people all day. Racist, this, that, blah, blah. Or we talk about black people. Sometimes we even make fun of our own people in a comedy. You know what I'm saying? We throw them shots. It seems like when we throw the shots at that community, it's always targeted as a bullying type thing. Like, we can't say that about this community, but we can say everything else about every other community. And I don't understand why is that? Why is it that these people are so sensitive or this community is so sensitive when they're being spoken about? Y'all, y- y'all want it to be heard. Y'all want it to be noticed. Now y'all heard and noticed and being spoken about. So y'all got to take, y'all got to accept these shots because we get it done every single day. Um, can I say, uh, uh i think the world is too sensitive Mm. i think you know i think in this particular situation you know i think uh understanding is super important i think that you know people are judging are like all right so like you got one side that feel like they're right Mm -hmm. and the side the, the other side feel like they're right but they're basically hurting each other, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. they're hurting each other. And and I think David Chappelle is trying to say that, you know what I mean? Like, yo, you know, sometimes you think you're doing something that works, but it's a cause and effect to that as well, you know what I'm saying? So I think it's opening a Pandora box. I think conversation needs to be had. I think we can't go to the table angry, both sides, you know what I mean? Uh, I think, you know, we have to sit and, you know, be able to understand each other before we get this. So we don't have the preconceived notions of, you know what I mean, oh, he's like this or sh- or even a transgender. Oh, and, you know, I don't like them because they like that. Like, you got to take all of that out, clear your mind, and we got to hear each other. You know what I mean? That's And, and, and Hop, you are 100% right. You are 100% right. I think people, when they listen to David Chappelle, I think the people that are offended, for one, if you click, if you turn on your TV to listen, listen to David Chappelle, or if you went and turned on Netflix to look at his stand-up comedy, I think these this community or this group of people, not the group itself, the group of people that feel offended, y'all are taking out the aspect, and this is just me, y'all are taking out the aspect of remembering this is still comedy. Right. See, y'all are attacking David Chappelle personally for what he's saying, but he's saying it. It ain't like he's just on on on, on his phone or somebody called him outside and he made these comments. He is saying it within a comedy platform to where his job is to make people laugh. Right. This this is what comedians do. Mm-hmm. Now comedians right. have targeted groups of people, like I said before. Even even in, we target our own group, black people. <clears throat> Right. But when we talk about black people, nobody stand out and go crazy. Y'all don't stand out and say, oh, this is wrong. You're going too hard, David Chappelle. Right. But when we say something about trans and he's saying in the way he say it, it's, oh, you're wrong and this and that. Like he said, he made a comment. So it was so real to me. Like the baby could get in so much trouble for making a statement about trans. But, yo, the dude killed the man in Walmart. He didn't get this much backlash. You know what's so crazy? I just want to say this, right? Because 
I be joking a lot and playing, but to be honest, like realistically, before there was an LGB community, and this is gonna sound crazy, but there was an FAT community. You know what I'm saying? And we had to literally take a lot of, yo, bro, you know, all my life, people made jokes of like fat jokes. Mm -hmm. and, you know, mm -hmm. heavy set joke. They got movies out called The Nutty Professor. Yo, it's three of them joints. I love this. I, I love this. Talk about it. it. Facts. And we never, you know what I'm saying? You have to be, like you said, you have to be able to take a joke. And you know what I'm saying? And, and you know what? To speak for, for the other side as well, it has to be tasteful. You know what I mean? Everybody don't have tasteful jokes. Mm hmm Yo, but let but me say I, this. I ain't really say nothing on this. Um... I, like I, I ain't really like I said. I ain't see the whole thing. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but again, I think I agree with y'all when it comes down to yo. Listen, this is comedy. You know what I'm saying, and uh, you gotta. We all know when you when it comes down to comedy, you gotta have thick skin. You know what I'm saying, uh, not to mention, this is Dave Chappelle we talking about. Dave mm -hmm. Chappelle ain't never had no filter. You know what I'm saying, he mm -hmm. gonna say whatever the fuck he want. Whenever the fuck he wants. You know what I mean, so but what I did see was uh sign called what is it? I, I, am I canceled? It was like a little Yeah. Uh, I'm in a joint where he kinda okay. went into detail about that. Um We could go into it because I was getting into that next, so please go on. Okay. Yeah, and he was just you know, like he was stating like, yo, he he ain't got no problems whatsoever with the LGBT Q community, mm -hmm. transgender. He said he gets no hate from them. He says all love. He said majority of the, the, the hate that he getting from right now is from corporations that's mm -hmm. trying to cancel him or trying to back out on him. You know what I'm saying? So, and that's true. So, he, he sparked the controversy about defending J.K. Rowe over her comments about the trans community. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm right. saying? So, with that happening, there's platforms that try to block his documentary, documentary that he's coming out with, and it's and like they try to block it from appearing on like film festivals and things like this. And this is what saying like the the corporations is the ones that have the problem because at the end of the day, yes, they are. This is life. Some people gonna love you, some people gonna hate you. There is a group of trans trans that don't like David Chappelle, but there is a group of trans that do like David Chappelle. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he, yeah, he, like he said it. Know what I'm saying he said, "Yo, he, he said, yo, listen, I ain't got no complaints about none of that." He said, "I get wild love from yeah. from that community. I my, I ain't got no issues." So, wait, those wait. was his words exactly. Know what I'm saying I ain't got no issues with that community. He said, "I get love. I know a bunch of people." Know what I'm saying like he so, said, even throughout this situation, it the hate hasn't even really been coming from that community. It's exactly. To be exactly. Human. So they tried to say, this is so. This is what, what was really going on. They was trying to say, even the people at Netflix, the trans com community at Netflix, felt some type of way. You know what I'm saying? They invite they like they they invited him to speak at at the trans like at, at Netflix. They invited him to speak at a uh, um at the transgender employees, and he refused. They said. So David Chappelle is like, yo, that's not true. I didn't refuse. And he was like, yo, if they hit me, I would have came. But the only right. thing is, you know what I'm saying? I heard what y'all said, and y'all heard what I said. I'm going to speak what I have to speak if I get there. Yeah, you he said, look, he said, he quick. said, I'm not, he said, he specifically said, I'm not bending for nobody. For nobody. He said, I ain't got no problem having a conversation with anybody, but you will not summon me. Exactly. That was exactly what he said. And we've been through this with David Chappelle, y'all. He turned down $50 million because of this. Right. And in Same that situation. Yo, listen, in that documentary when he said he did the walk, he got off the bus. Yep. He yep. Did that was fire. Work. That is yo, bro, you resume speaks for itself. Action speaks louder than words. Yeah. Respect this man. Dave a uh, day I said Dave Chappelle is ahead of his time, bro. And yeah. he's genius, bro. You hit it. it is you, really genius. You hit it on the nose too, how action speaks louder than words. And like David Chappelle said, I'm not saying that he's right, but he made a good, strong point in the comedy, in the stand up, the closer. He said, y'all have not been hearing me. Y'all only been hearing, it's been selective hearing. Y'all been hearing what y'all wanted to hear. 
because if y'all was really listening to what I was saying, y'all would hear when I'm not coming at the trans com- committee, com- community. Right. And he's not. Like he said, yo, this lady, and he had a trans, a trans white lady, he, got, he met her at a show. He called her up. Got her number at the show, called her up and said, yo, I'm coming back in your town. I want you to, you know, I want you to open up the show for me. He knew she did, he, she did comedy as well. He had no problem with that open hand, gave her opportunity. Like he said, yo, this lady bumped it for 45 minutes. The worst he ever seen. But one thing he respected is, yo, she came right back out and sat right there in the front. She didn't do like other people that he probably did, came across or he probably seen that went home, cried. She stayed and they communicated back and forth on the stage. He found a respect level for that person. He didn't look at Tran. He didn't look at nothing. And y'all went on, he went on Twitter. Somebody said she defended him because the trans community was saying that he punched down on them. She said David Chappelle doesn't ch- punch down, he doesn't punch up, or he does punch lines. He's a master at what he does. This is coming from somebody that y'all say don't like David Chappelle for what he stands for. And then going through what she was going through, probably the, the community, social media, I'm going to say. I'm not going to say just community. Social media bashed her. Not saying that this is what led to her death, but six days later, she committed suicide. David mm-hmm. Chappelle turned around and started a fund, trust fund for her kids. Yeah. He said when he wants to be alive by the time they turn 21, he want to give them that money personally. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? To, to help this situation. And then at the same time, he did what we love comedian that what we love from comedians. He took a serious situation because when we don't, we don't always want to be so tense and anyone, he took that situation and made a laugh out of that at the end. He said, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to let them, that do, the daughter know or the son know that your father was the best female I ever met. That was funny. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm and saying? He, like, he turned it into a funny situation. Yeah. To give some type of life. That's what comedy does. We make you make it makes you laugh to give life to your you probably was bored and upset every single day. Cut the cap is sponsored by War Apparel. Top of the line, high quality fabric, handmade from top to bottom. So make sure you go get yours at marshallwar.com. That's marshallwar.com. Wisdom amongst loyalty. Yeah, you know what time it is. It's that time of the show. Cut the, cut the, cut the track. Well, if it's hot, we say cut the track. And if it's not, we say cut. So this week is my week. I'm back at it. And it's only right on this Halloween special. Y'all ready? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. All right, so out the gate, I got Dub Aura straight out of Harlem. Let's get into it. Feel like I'm Dion, it's prime time when I'm scrambling. And you can play the field, but it's only one Peyton Manning. You could probably see my future with all the shit that my hands in. And it's the flow that got him to panic. I'm hard to manage, nigga. I done managed to stay dry through another storm. And I done set myself on fire to keep up as warm. I spring through in that new Virgil shit that come in fall. I learned the game from all them days I was under boss. I'm chopping mm. some man, I come from this shit. Fuck cut from a different cloth. I was cut from a brick. I might put yeah. you in a six and pocket front of the neck. On me ten and boss that beat those right on hundred and six. Shit. You won't never know if they that law you. You could be up front with niggas and then still back door you. My aura rich like I own black oil. And I won't stop till I go to a billion black for you. That's how I black for you. You got goals, then it's potholes. But I'm Stevie Wonder, cause I could do this with my eyes closed. Ribbon in the sky is just a symbol how I'm flying. Fuck the numbers and the clout. I'm like Biggie in a style. I'm notorious, glorious. To get somebody rocking like me, you need glorious. But in my lifetime, I seen things the way you probably afford. Like I ain't talking protesting when they marching with poles. And your integrity is safe if you honor the code. Man, they can't see me. Guess you gotta milk cotton these flows. <laughs> mm. Plus, I'm trying to milk the game for a hundred mil. So just know that if we come in, we gonna come for real. Cut the, cut the, cut the track. That was the homie dub aura. Now nah, I mean straight out of Harlem. What y'all think, man? Talk to me, man. That's notorious, by the way, featuring Dave East. That's um, yo, I, I mean, I like it. I like the ball, I like balls. I heard, 
Um, he said a dope line when you shot a front niggas, that's when they back door you. That was fire. Mm -hmm. Um, I like it. That's a cut the track for me. Uh, yo, I ain't gonna lie, bro. Listen, one thing on this show, artists, uh, you will get a lot of recognition, bro, for bringing <laughs> those bars. Bars, uh, they they alive, but they not where they need to be. That's one of the, f well, that's not one of the five elements of hip hop, but rapping is very important, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know if that's still <laughs> quite real nowadays, <laughs> uh, but yes, it's very important to rap. The man said, uh, with the milk carton, milk, they, uh, milk carton, these flows, crazy. He said a couple lines in there, bro. That was just, I'm, that's yeah, a cut, cut. Yes, yeah, so he had a few daggers in there. Word, bro. You know what I'm saying? Cut the, cut the, cut the track, bro. Yeah, so, I mean, like my guy said, of course, I'm gonna give it a cut the track. I fuck with Dub over now, man. Homie been spent for a minute now. Uh, I believe that joint right there, if I'm not mistaken, it, it, it might have been with A-Rap music. I know he got a lot of joints with A-Rap. Yeah, that sound I mean, like an A-Rap beat. Yeah, now nah, I mean, Dub get busy, now nah, I mean, he got some he got some heaters, now nah, I mean, he got some some real dope work. I respect his uh his versatility and all that, so shout out to Dub and all that. Uh, going on to number two. Now, I'm saying number two, we gonna go with Ito and Flea Lord. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, million dollar vocal range, killer with a soldier aim. I ain't really feeling it. Y'all spitting out that Novocaine. Rolling up this Wonder Pie. I've been told a hundred lies, dumping mine. When they see us pulling up, they running high. We got the Delgado, load the hollows. We ate good today, but grinding for tomorrow. This loop got me zoning in the booth at the moment. The piano like the ammo as I move back opponents. Uh, used cars on my feet, two bras on my meat. Couple knuckles out of place, few scars from the street. Lose time, I'll get it back. Spin the block, you miss your tracks. Hold the broom, case these fuck niggas wanna act. Project number 10, E, we shot it up again. Put our life on the line, so we gotta fucking win. We put our life on the line, so we gotta fucking win. We got charged for my speech. We charged for our speech. Ten large every week. Ten large. Yeah, the gangsters ride a vibe to it. Gangsters ride a vibe. We don't fuck with a leech. We don't fuck with a leech. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> that was Ito and Flea Lord. Know what I'm saying? Talk to me, man. That was Brigante and Delgado right there. Talk to me, y'all. What y'all think? What y'all? What 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 oh, I'm going first? It, it, it's up to you. What up? Okay, finally, they let the future executive of the A&R <laughs> go first, bro. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I ain't going to lie, bro. I ain't going to be long-winded, but, bro, I love gritty records like that, bro. Let me tell you something. I ain't going to lie, fellas. A lot of stuff that we play here is cool. And you know what I'm saying? It's, it's a cut to track. But this one is a really cut to track. Like, I'm going to put that on my playlist. That song is fire, and I love gritty music. So I'm playing that. That's definitely going to my play. That beat is retarded. The, 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 his voice, I love her. It sound like they, that group. Oh, come on, mm. bro. I, I, yeah. I was, that's, the, that's what inspired me to even be in hip hop. Like, that right there. Right. That's, That's a cut friend. the track. Triangle, talk to me. Um, <clears throat> I think what I like, I think what I like the most about the track was his. I think his voice, and I mean, of course, his bars because he was spinning bars, but I don't know his voice just drug me into the actual track itself. So when right. he's different things, I, it hit different. Um, I wasn't a big, big fan of the beat. I think the only reason why, because I think the beat was, for me, it was too loud over him. I want to hear him a little bit over the beat. But other than that, together, I think it was a, a dope mix. But I like to cut the track. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go, I'm gonna go uh, straight out the back of a cut the track. Uh, I'm pointing out the good things that I like. I did like it was a simplistic beat, gritty sound, like Vash Rose said. However, 
Um, I didn't like a couple of things. Like I hate when artists leave like a gap before the hook, like they ran out of bars to write and then the hook drops and then the hook was super short. But outside of that, it's the home is fire. Cut the track. Okay. Okay. See, this, this is what I love about this show. You know what I'm saying? You're going to get different, you're going to get different point of views, man. You know, like, you know, Triangle said, you know, he said something about the beat. Me personally, I love that beat. Mm-hmm. That beat. Mm-hmm. Give me chills. You know what I'm saying? That shit make my, they give me them goosebumps, that ding, 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 that chime and all that. Oh, man. Hey, what, what's shit. the name of that song again? That's uh Delgado and Brigante. Um, and then and then and then Square says something about you know leaving that gap uh in the beat and all that, which I gotta understand what what he's saying, but also, you know, me personally, like as an artist, you know, I respect that sometimes. Know what I mean, I kind of like that type of shit because it sets the tone, it sets the moment on a record you know some sometimes you ain't got to attack the jaw you know that da, 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 da. i'm saying sometimes you just gotta let that bitch breathe you feel me yeah i like you know that I mean? yeah. but 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 this is now i mean a beautiful thing about this now i mean that you get uncut and and, and raw and uncut now i'm saying everybody got different opinions you ain't gonna get bro square the same shit from everybody square need to go check on the players bro <laughs> Speak when you're spoken to. <laughs> Yo, so last and, and last but not least, know what I'm saying this this one of my favorite artists. Know what I'm saying, uh, matter of fact, listen, I don't I don't want to say too much. Let's get into it, man. This ransom, pray for the week. on my plate of sins in this world that is celebrate when the haters win when on the cusp of greatness don't get accustomed to making friends mama told me the shit that makes a man is to make amends was never into all the latest trends not my way to spend but shit you can't judge a picture if you gonna break the lens lay a gem drop tools constantly on the hottest beast because sonically i'm like socrates on a crowded street the gills got heron a heroin fly as elegance intelligence everything that i write is fire and eloquent you niggas go on notice when you aspire for relevance a different man but still us and killers inside your residence just tap my shoulder when it's getting realer give 10 to shiller cause she come from a place the fiends can i live the dealers you don't know the half of it waving sticks like a magic trick it half the clip i ain't never been on no rapper shit these ghetto street gospels food for the soul turn street niggas to apostles you need me and i got you don't brace for the feet just keep your place on your feet so you can pray for the week and be my prey for the week disciples that'll hold a 12 gauge when they preach writing scriptures that'll take you 12 days to repeat i said these ghetto street gospels food for the soul turn street niggas to apostles you need me and i got you don't brace for the feet just keep your place on your feet so you can pray for the week and be my pray for the week cut the, cut the, cut the track. yes sir yes sir that was the one and only know what i mean that was ransom right there pray for the week <clears throat> circle talk to me man you know i got to go with you first Yes, yeah, yeah. You know I'm saying, you know, me out of all these guys, you know, what I'm saying the square. I mean, the triangle and the square. Uh, it's all about the circle, bro. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I, I. Yo, look, right. So I feel like Ransom is one of those guys. First of all, I ain't got a lot, Ransom. You are amazing. You're super talented, bro. Like so many artists. I, I used to hear Ransom back in the day, and I aspired to rap like with with that level of greatness you know what i mean i mean ransom been around for a long time so like he needs his flowers man you know what i'm saying i, I don't know if he's still independent it must be because he want to be or music i don't know what the hell those labels is doing bro you know what i'm saying they definitely passed up a gym you know what i'm saying uh he said waving sticks like a magic uh magic trick that was hard bro uh he sounds very seasoned which he is. And yo, all praises to you, Ransom. Hopefully one day, um 
more rappers to get on the level that you on, man. That's a cut the track, bro. Yeah, sure. Triangle. Um, yeah, he, uh, yo, dude took me back. I ain't gonna lie. I don't really know too much. Definitely gonna learn more about him now that I heard, you know, his music. That, that hook, that, my line, I might have to mall pray for the week. Yeah, that was pray for the week. Oh, my yeah, that Lord. Was that was different. That's, whew, oh, oh. cut the track. Yeah, just the hook itself got me. Yeah. Square. Uh, I'm gonna start off with cut the track. Um, Ransom is doing his thing for a minute. Uh, I'm not new to him. However, the beat caught me. I don't. I don't. Know, I don't recall um, hearing a song with Game, and uh, I think somebody else is featured on it also. But uh, that sample sounds familiar. Like I've sampled it before, and I love how they. You know. That's when the producer side of me come out. I love how they flipped that. And it, was, it wasn't too much. It was nice and simple. Nice chop. And it flowed well with the wordplay. And uh, like Strategic said, the hook was fire. So cut the track. Yeah, yeah. So y'all heard it, man. You know what I'm saying? And of course, you know what I mean? For me, listen, like I stated at the start, Rand is one of my favorite artists. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's a, he's a ball smith. He is a master craftsman at what he does with playing with words, know what I'm saying? Like, Rand is different, know what I mean? I always thought Rand should be in a different space, know what I'm saying? Um, but you know, everybody got they, they call and everybody got, you know, I know he's still doing what he do, know what I mean? I know he's still successful. I know he's still at it getting busy. So super shout out to Rand, know what I'm saying? Keep killing him them balls. And I just want to say, son, know what I mean, being that this was the Halloween edition, know what I mean, I, I, I wanted to tie in the theme of the episode as far as Halloween with the records that I put on Cut the Track. That's why, you know, I gave more of that, you know, gritty, you know, dirty vibe. And, and, and then you see with the ranch on, it was more kind of like on that eerie feel. You know what I'm saying? So I wanted to, you know, put it all together, you know what I mean, for the episode and all that. Uh, so to set the yeah. mood, the, the funk sway. You know what I'm that saying? Was dope. The funk sway. Yeah, was... So, gentlemen, uh, then, uh, let's get into it. So, the NBA dropped the uh, top 75. Greatest plays of all time on the 75 year edition or anniversary or something to that extent, right? And yeah. there's been a lot of controversy on there with, with people um, that should be on there, that shouldn't be on there. And of course, yeah, yeah, I know who one of my favorite players is, um, Carmelo Anthony. So I want to get into uh, a couple things surrounded by him and some other people that you might think that that you could have made the list because I, I have I have some some questions too. Um, so first off, I wanted to say Melo deserves to be on the list. Um, he's, okay. a, he's a future Hall of Famer, 10-time all-time, um, 10-time all-star, a scoring champ, NCAA, a uh, four-time Olympic medal winner, three times gold. Um, he's made the All-NBA team three times, second NBA team two times, uh, and the list goes on. So, um, there's a lot of people that on that list that don't have half that record but okay. his downside is that he's an offensive player so he gets knocked for not playing defense and not having much success in the playoffs um and for the flip side of that when when people are uh looked at for hall of fame they look at what they've done for what during their career not so much um how well they gel with a team so I want to know. I want to get y'all take on which I think some changes. Like who who do y'all think should have made the list that didn't make the list? Do you think Melo should be on that list, or like what what are your viewpoints on that? I uh, think Melo definitely should be on the list. Melo's one of the when he's a great player. You know what I'm saying? He's one of the most top offensive players. You know, very hard to guard. 
You know, he, he put him in different situations, and he know how to capitalize. I ain't saying his defense is the best, but I think he deserved to be on that. He, like you said, with all his accolades um, that you just mentioned alone, he should be on that list. You know, so that's my take on it. Yeah, but some people really hold like, okay, he didn't make it. He only made it to the, the Western Conference Finals, you know, once or twice and um, made it to the, the semi finals with the on the east once so they, they try to hold that against him not the, the fact that he's been averaging close between 23 and 25 points his entire career and that he's top 10 in scoring of all time out of all players so people just overlook that and look at the negatives so i think that's one of the reasons people don't look at him to add it to the list but um no, i definitely think mellow belong in the, in the 75 hey. listen mellow is ninth on the list right now and on the all-time scoring Yes. I mean, can't take that away from him, regardless of what you may think of him as a player. Yeah. I was surprised by by uh, Clay Thompson not being on the list. I thought he might have made it. So, list. do you have a person you? I, Cause I, I got a person that, and, and and this is this might sound a little weird, but I got a person that I would swap out on that list too, on that that seventy five list. But uh, do you got anything, Bash? You want to say it on this before I go into that? Uh, yeah, Bob Mello. Yeah. Um, Melo deserved to be on that list. Beast cut the cap. <laughs> Shout out to our war brother Beast. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think I right, so look, I you know what? See, we need to give Melo his praises. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot of faulties with Melo, you could say. You know what I mean? Off the court, you know what I mean? Or whatever you want to say, you know what I mean? About him and La La and all that crazy stuff. But um, basketball-wise, even I know. And I'm not a Nick fan, but I see those games Melo play. I don't even like Melo on De- – like, everybody likes Melo from Denver. Melo – I like the Melo on the Knicks. That dude had heart, bro. Yeah. He had heart. He went out there and gave it 110% every night. He was smoking people, bro. I mm. mean, yo, his whatever that step is, what's that jab step? Triple that threat. Triple threat joint, bro. And that joint, when he do this, bro, I was in the crib doing this, bro. Mm. Whenever Ginobili scored. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? Like, I ain't going to lie. Yo, only thing, my great with Melo. And, you know, I'm the same way. I'm loyal to a uh, T, and I learned that now. Like, sometimes you got to let go. And I remember that time. I was in the presence of that time when he had the opportunity to go to the Bulls. This was D. Mm. Rose with D. Rose. Yeah. Jimmy Butler, uh, Noah. Who else was on that team? It was a bunch of people on that team. Now, just It was a good, solid core Bulls team. And they needed that star. And I always felt like Melo should have left, bro. And we wouldn't even be having this conversation. But you see, though, that, that, that see, that's the reason right there why I fuck with Melo so much. You know what I'm saying? That's why I'm a Melo fan forever. Because Melo stood on his square. You know what I mean? And he stood tall. Right. And even when everything around him was falling. Right. And he knew the Knicks, you know what I'm saying, was not putting the right pieces around him. He still stood tall, you know what I'm saying, because he wanted to bring something to the city. He wanted to bring something to his hometown, and he believed he could. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you look at the players now in the NBA, they'll be on the team for a year, and if it ain't going right, they they want to get up out of there. Right, They. Yeah. They they telling the coach, they telling the media, yo, nah, I don't want to play here. They putting out little leaks. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that man, I can't say nothing bad about Melo, man. Like, he was honorable, you know what I'm saying? He stood tall. He was riding for New York to the fullest. You know what I'm saying? Like, he didn't leave New York because he wanted to leave New York, even when he left. He left because he felt he got pushed out, you know? Right. As far as Phil Jackson was concerned. So, super shout out to Melo. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
Yeah. One of the best scorers of all time, know what I'm saying? Pure scorer. Right. I mean, unstoppable. Your greatest players, you know, have, you know, have said, yo, Melo was one of the hardest players to guard in the league. Know what I'm saying? So, super shout out to Melo, know what I'm saying? Now, you know what's so crazy, too? Like, Melo is goaded, but I, you know, I always feel like this is it's not going off a subject. I feel like everybody plays, like, their, in a sense of their player, like, their whole... Like, they embody their player. Like, if you like a certain player, you embody that. You might not even realize you do. But, like, the things that you made you like that player, you mm -hmm. grow up and you tend to do on the court. If you could do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is this a 2K reference to me? No, nah, no. Is it 2K <laughs> reference? <laughs> no, nah, in general, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm talking about in real basketball, too. Like, you kind of emulate your guy. If you could do that. Because everybody can't dunk that, you know. Yeah. Obviously, if you're, like, five... Nine and you like Vince Carter, you might not be able to, you know what I mean? Be a Vince Carter, but I don't know. You kind of embody that, you know what I'm saying? But since you brought up 2K, yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> nah, I play yes. defense, bro. Yes, um, <laughs> Melo had, you know, you got more vision than Melo, but Melo had tunnel vision, bro. And yeah, sometimes it was, yeah, it was a little, bad. it was definitely a little bad. For, you know what I'm saying? That's the only thing. That we... <laughs> <laughs> All right. So on, on another note, though, um, I got, I got something like a, that might spark a little controversy. So on that 75 people list, I agree with some people that were saying that they should swap out Damon Lillard for Dwight Howard. What do y'all take? Oh, on? hell no. What? What are your takes on that? Please hit the button on this guy here, bro. <laughs> now, now, I got a, no, and I got some reasoning behind it. Because if they're yeah. going off pure statistics and accolades, he smokes Lillard. Because he's a three-time defensive player of the year, eight-time all-NBA, um, eight-time all-star, five all-defense. He got He's a championship, and he's led the league in blocks twice. Meanwhile, Lillard has only been... All star six times, NBA, all NBA six times, and rookie of the year. And that's it. Nothing else. He accomplished nothing else. But he made the list Niggas over said Howard. That's it. But compared to what I just listed for Howard, he Yo, the listen, list. there's a statistic about Damian Lillard. Yeah. Do you know that Damian Lillard has never played with another All Star? That, oh that's that's a shot to, uh, to McCullough. Yeah, but yeah, okay. Bro. And yet he's still out there putting up ridiculous right, numbers yeah. every year. Not to mention he probably got snubbed from the All Star game about three years in a row, where he should have been on the All Star team. But they're they're Without picking play. this based upon what though? His 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 potential or what he has done? Because, like I said, if, you, if you're doing purely on, like, what you've done late, for me lately, Dwight Howard is smoking the little as far as, like, accolades. He, but I'm talking about pre, like, him going to, like, L.A. and getting the chip or whatever the case may be. But the fact that that's on his resume, like, the, the, the defensive side when he was on Orlando and he took them where he took them further than... Let the, me ask Damian. you something, bro. Yeah. Are you taking Dwight Howard over Damian Lillard, bro? Um, depending, no, no, no I'm, I'm gonna keep it for you. Depends on what I need. You know, you know how I am. There's bro, only a few players that's a definite bro. for me, no matter who nah, I am. Nah, bro. Listen, are you I'm taking a... right, bro. Dwight Howard or Damian Lillard, bro? Right. Prime, First prime pick, Dwight bro. Howard. Prime Dwight huh? Howard. I, I'm going prime. prime. First pick. Whatever out of the Dwight Howard and this, and you want to have. Listen, that's that's a shit question. Because in this era, I'm gonna go with Lillard. But in prime Dwight Howard era, when Bigs were Bigs. I'm going with Howard all the way. That's cap. Dwight Howard, here's a fun fact about Dwight Howard. He don't mm -hmm. even got no footwork, bro. He never have and never will, bro. And he was smoking people and took them to the finals by himself then. Yeah, somewhere bro, Lillard has never been. Bro, he was not smoking nobody. But I'm saying he took him to the finals somewhere that Lillard has never been. Bro, that man came in a league. He was nothing but uh, he was a dunker, bro. He, he just I'm jumped. not. I'm not going off all that. I'm just talking about what he has done. And I agree with with the, with that notion that he, that until Lillard actually does more, that they should swap that out.
Yo, can I say something? What up? Yes, please. I don't know who needs to be swiped out, but I know <laughs> who needs to be there, and I'm pissed. Tracy McGrady needs to be there on that list, bro. Let's talk about it. Why? Why do you so, think that? Because Tracy Come McGrady. Come on, T Mac not there? No. No, he's not, and I'm pissed. Oh hell oh, no! Oh no, I'm done with T Mac. T Mac is a Hall of Famer. Who he's put this team. list together? Five? <laughs> <laughs> nah, T Mac would have been on my list. <laughs> T-Mac is a Hall of Famer. He's a two-time NBA scoring champion. 2003, 2004, he's a seven-time NBA All-Star. He's a seven-time All-NBA. He's even a McDonald's All-American, bro. <laughs> like, yo. I didn't even mention that for Melo, but yeah. T-Mac is a GOAT, NBA's most improved player of all the 2001. You know what I'm saying? He has nothing but athlete. I feel like he should have been there. And yeah. I'm a T. Man, me and him share the same birthday. He is my favorite player. How the fuck did T Mac not make and, the work? Nah, and, yeah. and that is and that is it. That, that that's what I say about that. That's who I feel should be there. That's not there. Listen, there's a bunch of big snaps. I ain't gonna lie. That's why I'm saying like there's some people where like they still in the lead, but because they they kill it now, people are like, oh, we just gonna throw him in his list. I just wanna say T Mac. Now I wanna know who what other players on the list. I want to say T Mac can kiss my grits. Well, I don't like T Mac. Oh, uh, well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, 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 Spurs fan. We get it. He, listen, he got T Mac at the end of his career. He does it. Man, y'all can long. keep him, bro. We all, T Mac scored 13 points on us in 20 seconds. 11 in 20 <laughs> seconds, man. I don't like that guy, bro. <laughs> Shout out to him you being your what? favorite player because he is a goat though. But and we share the same birthday. You gotta say, Yo, bro, you had T Mac on your team, man. You forgot? Yes, and he was stomping on the ground like this when it was going down. He thought he was that about was... to get him a chip. Yeah, that was the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Had the trip. Y'all blew it, huh? Y'all mm -hmm. let Ray Allen hit that corner three, man. That's another. I'm glad he. Ain't... Oh, he on this list? Oh, yeah, cut the cap. Get him off this <laughs> list, bro. <laughs> Yeah, on the list. How you gonna so, put Ray Allen over Kyrie, bro? <laughs> so to close Cut this out, the to close this out, um, I got, I got the the six biggest snubs that uh, I think that they that they need to think of, rethink about with this seventy five anniversary team pick. So the White Howard, obviously, Vince Carter, Tracy McGrady, Matumbo, and Alex English. And Yo, Paul Matumbo not on the list. Nope. Oh, nah. So those are my six. Hold nah, on. they Chris, bugging. Chris no if Vince Carter's not on the list, bro. <laughs> yeah, bro. It might sweat them, bro. Who made this That's list? That's crazy, bro. NBA. Nah. Yo, so, 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 so let me give you some backstory. So the top 50 was old school, a lot of old school players. They only so added 25 I, more people. That's what I was going to say. That was one of the things I was going to say. That's yeah. List, bro, is mad old people. You got, yeah. like, Bob McAdoo. I love Bob McAdoo. You know what I'm saying? But he, it is really yeah, the same. Bob McAdoo is better than uh, yeah, hell Mac, yeah, bro. hell no. All right, yo, he is, but don't say that. Wait. He's two time champion, one time MVP, five time all star, two time all NBA. In yo, bro, bro, I already, I already the stats, bro. man. Don't worry about it. I said his stats, okay. you don't gotta say it. Man, right. Leave my man alone. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's the guy. I ain't gonna lie, the guy. whoever made this list. It's cock a doodle pee pee. It's cock a doodle fucking pee pee. You ass, nigga. All right, fellas. In the spirit of Halloween, know what I'm saying? I want to know what's your favorite top five Halloween movies. Well, they ain't got to be necessarily Halloween movies, but you know, scary movies, horror movies, so on and so forth. Come on, man. I want to know what y'all got. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. huh, this is for this. Since I always pick the best list, I'm going to go. I'm going to give you a chance this time. I'm going to go last. Hmm. Um, I don't know. I, I, I didn't prepare myself for this one, so I'm going to go off the fly. Uh, let's see. So off the back, you got to go with, with uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, okay. That's one of my top ones. Yeah, you can't go wrong with that one. Um, another one, my second one. Well, these are not in, in particular order. These are some 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 
horror movies that I that I like. Right, right. Uh, when I was younger, the first two Chucky's was real. Um, right. So I put that as number play. two. Child's Play, one and two. Uh, right. The original Candyman for number three. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. Of course, Halloween for Michael Myers. Okay. And this last one is nobody's probably going to say this, but I'm gonna do us. Um, okay. I'm gonna do us, which is the new joint. <laughs> yeah, the new joint. Yeah, definitely. Nobody said you, was, yeah, you was definitely right when you said nobody's going. <laughs> yeah, one. I'm gonna do us because that one was fire. Us was fire. Over. And okay. No, not over anything. I'm just, I just try to give a variety because I could have went with the simple Jasons, Jason versus Freddy, et cetera, et cetera. But I try to be a little right. bit different because I know everybody's going to say the same thing. I ain't no wrong. Hell no, I'm not I'm saying the same wrong. list, bro. Circle. Yes. Talk to us. What you got? I, the one of my, the most scariest, listen, my mom's is a horror movie, you know, type of person. And I'm not a horror movie, but I had to go through that scary every night. You know what I'm saying? You ain't really scared. You're looking in the so mirror. The first I know. One, yes, was The Shining. Okay. Mm -hmm. Shining mm -hmm. just scared me to death, bro. My second one, because I'm trying to write them down, so I'll just say them. Uh, Freddy, the first Freddy. I think it was Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, Nightmare on Elm Street, yeah. Now, what was the movie? I don't know the name of the movie with the guy with the pins in his face. A Hellraiser. What was that? Oh, a Hellraiser. 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 You just Hellraiser. scared the shit out of me, bro. <laughs> uh, okay. Then, okay. Make sure I remember this. Uh, oh, you know what movie scared me in the last couple of joints? What? The Exorcist scared the hell out of me. Yep, that was my. Mm hmm. Oh, you gonna do that in Paranormal Activity? Paranormal Activity didn't really scare me. The movies that scare me, I don't remember the name of this movie. What uh, it was about? It, it, it's those movies where they go through hell and all that crazy stuff, and sometimes like Constantine and one of them with uh, Keanu Reeves or something. It's deep. Yeah, I, I you know what? Hold on, time. I got four here. I'll just say another movie that really scared the living crap out of me. <laughs> Oh, so you're doing like movies that scared you or just movies all the time. Yes, movies like, like OD hard. I was like, oh, oh okay. Smoke. So then this I got to go back. Crazy. Yeah, so then my list changes. I get what you're saying now. Because then I got to do stuff when uh, I was younger. Dang, what movie scared other than that? But see, all those movies ain't scared me. Like, Oh, the movie where the cop pull you over. What? What was that? <laughs> Nothing. Oh, <laughs> uh, I didn't see that. Go check, the, go. go check on the go. Go check on the player's circle. Uh, I mean square. Um, I, I I don't have a number five though, bro. I don't. Yeah, I don't. man. You know, it used to scare me. This might be a little bit off topic, but you know, McDonald's when they had the moon, the guy was the moon face. This <laughs> no, bro. I'm just yo, we tired, but that is, but that used to scare the hell out of me. <laughs> um. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, bro. That's I got four, man. The rest of the joints is barbecue chicken, bro. <laughs> okay. yeah. All right. Uh, so triangle. My first, I'm going with is Chucky. Child's play. Okay. Mm -hmm. Chucky. Um, Nightmare Elm Street. Definitely. Gremlins. I'm, I gotta put the Gremlins up there. Mm -hmm. That was a good one. Gremlins. Used to Gremlins. Me the hell out of me. Um, this is my, I got a lot, but this is going to be, yo, the ring. I like the ring because it was different. It was the first of its kind. Well, yeah, the ring, was was, tough. the ring was tough. Yeah, it was the first of its kind, but it was different. It set the tone for a whole different type of audience. Um, And my last one, oh, I got so many. I just don't, uh, let me see, let me see. I, I want to make sure I pick a real good one that I'm thinking about. I got the Gremlins, Nightmare on Elm Street, Chucky. Uh, I don't know if I want to do the Exorcist or the Fly. The Fly was hard. Mm. I'm yeah, gonna go with the Fly. fly. I'm gonna go with the Fly. That's my five. 
scary or horrible. Mm-hmm. That's my list. Okay. Man, okay. More. okay. 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 All right. So, you know what I'm saying y'all list was respectable. You know what I'm saying. I'm gonna approach my list a little different. My list is a is a mixture of you know horror, horror, and, and a mixture of you know some of just my favorite you know movies that I might like to watch during that period of time when it comes to like Halloween and things of that nature. Okay, you feel me? So my first. Well, again, not in no particular uh, particular order. First, I got Beetlejuice. Okay. Hold okay. on, Beetlejuice used to scare you? Nah, this is what I said. See, yeah, yeah, see yeah. what I said? It's not necessarily just... Oh, uh, just your favorite movie. Scary, scary. It's just, you know, because Beetlejuice was still a horror movie. Yeah. yeah mixed it in with some comedy. They you know played that? every Halloween, bro. Right, that's what I'm saying. That's one of my favorite. You know, I I, I might watch Beetlejuice every year. You yeah, know? Like, yeah. You know what Charles scared me in Beetlejuice when he died and he went to a thing and they were sitting there on the thing with their face, mm-hmm. they would, like a oh, chain yeah. walk around yeah, that yeah, yeah. That was scared, crazy, man. bro. That was brazen. All right. Uh, next I got The Shining. Yeah, that's what uh, I want. This, you see, The Shining is more on my horror horror. Yeah, like, I can't watch that movie. Took, I can't watch that movie no more. Next, I got Scream. Scream was my shit. Man. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? The original one, the first one. First not, one. None of them shits after that. Right. Uh, number four, I got It. Mm-hmm. It was really scary. That clown is ridiculous. I, I fucking hate clowns. Okay. That was on my notable that, list. <laughs> that that nigga was cook that, that nigga was cuckoo for cocoa puffs. Right. <laughs> nigga had the razor sharp teeth and all. I, I, nah, man. Nah, I'm yeah, saying? Uh-uh. Oh. And number five. One of my favorite movies of all time, now I'm saying when I was when I was a youngin, I probably don't watch this movie a thousand times. Hocus Pocus. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was a throwback. Yes, sir. Uh, Hocus. That was Hocus. a throwback. I'm saying that was my shit right there. I love that movie, man. Y'all got any honorable mentions, man? I got so a list of honorable mentions that nobody mentioned, man. Okay, I don't know about a list. Hold on. One. Right, bro. One, right, bro. One, maybe two. You know what I'm saying? Three, four, five, six, seven. What y'all got? Uh, I got two oh, notable mentions that, that, that nobody mentioned, though, as far as horror suspense. Nobody mentioned Saw. Mm-hmm. That was a okay. big, big one. And nobody mentioned Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, I'm going to go with Mons. Texas Chainsaw Massacre was on my honorable list. That was one of them. Yeah. My one of Mons, I know people not going to mention that. The mic cutting out what? one? Yeah, yeah, your mic cut off on that one. What'd you say? The hills have eyes. Oh. Ooh. You tough. had that. The hill, that that was different. Yeah, that's tough. <laughs> nah, I'm not, that's, yeah. the, that's one of my favorite movies. I don't know. I, I didn't think of that. Circle. <sighs> um... Circle's still trying to figure out his number five. Word. Yeah, but you need, I'm trying you to need figure me out to, to name five. some for you. Nah, cause you know what? I, I my list. See, horror. You know, yeah, I think we all got different horror. See, horror's movies that made me scared, bro. Like, oh, yes, yeah, yeah, I gotta yeah, think of that. That's but, why I said child's. But movies. you got. But this is the thing, though. You got a. You got a, a mix of horror movies. There's some horror movies that got comedy attached to them. I'm yeah. Sorry. They Wait, not just straight. Just straight yeah. It ain't not just straight yeah. horror. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. I got a. Uh... I ain't gonna lie. Look, I'm gonna throw this in there. This wasn't a movie, but I know y'all know this. This shit was cool. 
Tales from the Crypt late at night. Yep. When that yep. show used to come that on. Nah, nobody had a movie. They did have a movie. Oh, my God. The only reason why I ain't say it is because I thought you said movie. Nah, okay, nah, they had a movie. That. I mean, but there's a movie too. The the, the yeah. demon, what was it? Demon, demon night. Yeah. No, you know a movie scared the hell out of me too. Tales from the hood when all them little people that had died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That joint scared the hell out of me, and they mm. yo, and they came in the house with them and all that. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, bro. that's another classic. Yeah, yeah that's a fact. All right. Any other notables? The Exorcist, Emily Rose. I love that joint. Yeah, Exorcist, Poltergeist, uh, Jeepers Creepers, Night of the Living Dead, Aliens. Hell no, Aliens. No, not Aliens. Movie, what? Bro. That's bro, what, what y'all bro. With the first what y'all one? About, uh, what y'all thought about the Blair Witch Project? Blair that was, Witch Project, that yeah. was tough, too. It that was, was scary, too. though, bro. Yeah. It wasn't super scary, but that you know it was different at that time. Like yeah, so well, that that empowered normal activity. Those two, they had their own little wave at that point. The ending was a little scary, but because mm-hmm. they made it seem like that was that really happened. Okay, fellas, this is our favorite segment of the show. One of our favorite. We got so many different segments. You know what I'm saying? This is cap or no cap. Are you ready, gentlemen? Yes, sir. Okay, let's start it off with Takashi69. Y'all know him. His yeah. former manager, Shadi, <laughs> is seeking new legal counsel as he's reported down to his last $1,200 and unable to retain his own attorney. Now, the question is do you believe that Shadi is really broke? Cap yeah. or no cap? No cap. Hmm. Well, I believe shot this, 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 this is a tough question, right? Here. No cap. No cap. Hmm. God, the I'm a, are- yo, I'ma yeah. say no cap because motherfuckers do broke. There's people with more money than him that went broke from lawyers. So. No cap. It's possible. You go broke. Okay. Nah, yeah, yeah, I'll go with y'all. No cap, bro. We don't know <laughs> how his financials is running. It was spending his six nine was his finances. Uh, I'm pretty uh, sure. Yeah, let's go. No, nah, no, nah, I'm with y'all. I'm with y'all. I'm going to hear you. I mean, I, I think it's cap me personally. You know what I'm saying? So you think he got I, a hidden account somewhere that... that yeah, uh-huh. Because I don't think after the whole six nine thing, I don't think he was in the streets like that because he was running around <laughs> doing money with him. He said, yeah, uh-huh. I think this is just a uh, leave me alone. I'm broke. All right, let me Man, do my time. Watching. Bad's been watching too much be a word. <laughs> Yo, bro, <I'm laughs> he had much money to begin with. So I don't. Think I think he guy. has probably money invested into something. You know they and... take all that when you get a federal charge, right? Nah, but if you further, well, let me ask you this though, Bash. What 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 good does it do him him saying it? If he's trying to get out. Yeah, he's trying to basically say he don't have no money. He don't. He can't. I, maybe he didn't finish paying his previous lawyer. Maybe uh, he owes some money somewhere. You know what I mean? Uh, that, that's I why I would say cap. I believe that. Yeah. All right, let's keep moving. According to the reports, R. Kelly was placed on suicide watch following the guilty verdict. Uh, his sex trafficking trial, you know, following the sex trafficking trial, uh, people might be trying. Okay. Whoa, I read that wrong. According to R. Kelly. He was placed on suicide watch following the guilty verdict. People, m- people are saying they're trying to frame R. Kelly, bro. That's in a nutshell, bro. Do y'all think that's cap or no cap, bro? Cap. Yeah. Okay. Cap. That was a, yeah, cap. We are, but the, you know, people really believe that. Like, that people are coming after R. Kelly. Of course, mm-hmm. you got to be, but I was gonna ride with him, whether he's guilty or not. So, yeah. I but I do. I do believe though there might be some stragglers that you know, right. knowing that he you feel me, knowing that he down bad, they gonna try you feel me? Like yeah. get some more for two. You feel me? Yeah, sure. Okay, okay, here we go. Y'all know our last president. Uh Donald Trump just launched his own social media platform called Truth. The internet saying this app will flop. Is this cap or no cap? Cap. I say no, no cap. cap. No nope. cap. 
Yeah, I'm going with no cap too. Huh? You think he's cap. gonna flop? Hell yeah. no, he's gonna flop. It's Donald Trump. That's that's People what I'm saying. He said you, he asked, "What well, you think this go? Is it gonna flop?" And I said, "Cap." Oh, yeah. I, I, yeah, I don't think it's gonna flop. That's why I said that no. Is, okay, so uh, yeah, I don't think it's gonna flop. Whatever way that, you, that goes. Oh yeah, he, yeah, yeah. So it would be cap. If yeah, y'all, people, because people, the internet saying this that app it will, will flop. flop. Yeah. yeah, so that it will. Yeah, the flop. internet so saying that journey will pop off, bro. Yeah. Is that cap with or no cap? Because no cap meaning, no right. cap is meaning that it's true that it is gonna flop. Cap all right, is so, like it's not. All right, so I think, so I think it's cap. Yeah, then it's cap then. Yeah. Okay. So you got too much of a following. We gonna be on truth. Everybody going to truth. Hell no! But I'm, I'm gonna keep uh, it no, like no, this. No, 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 no. So no, nah, I'm saying no cap. Right. You yeah, think it's yeah, gonna yeah, flop? Awesome. Yeah, I think that shit gonna fucking. Hell yeah! I think that shit gonna do a somersault. <laughs> no, I, don't, I don't think so because I think he has a lot of he has a big following of extremists. And Once then you gonna have what he's gonna do is take all his he's gonna direct all his traffic mm -hmm. to his app or his social media yep. he's not going to use twitter like well twitter's not rocking him anyway but with all that attention that all that attraction that he gave twitter and all them big followers and them just for people to say things about him or mm -hmm. say yo you're an idiot they're gonna have people to go on his on yep. so they're gonna say it just to bash him he's gonna get trapped and hey, you got that nosy all people niggas. all of them yeah. they still gonna be on twitter they still yeah that, be on that's Instagram. how it works no nah, that's true but they just gonna the traffic is gonna go to him yeah, He's it's gonna just going to be another platform that people going to be on. It, that it, shit going to do a somersault. Yeah, I'm it's going to just be, you know, like, you know, like people got multiple apps. They got Twitter, Mashed Instagram, potatoes, all these. Bro. It's just going to be another one. Like. <laughs> Mashed potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, fellas. All right, so look. Boosie and Lil Nas is still going at it, ladies and gentlemen. You know what I'm saying? Lil Nas' uncle stepped in and tweeted, Boosie, how the hell are you a gangster rapper promoting drugs, guns, and violence, degrading women, and getting high every video, talking about you're for the kids? Man, sit your old ass down. Uh, okay, so sit your old ass down. Then he said, uh, the game has passed you. Did y'all got that? So my question to you guys are, uh, is Little Nas X Uncle Cap'n about what he said? Is it Cap or no Cap? It's Cap'n. Simple as that. It's Cap. It's Cap. I'm going with Cap. Okay. Boosie okay, so is, is solidified in the game right now. Like, yeah, Boosie doing just fine, bro. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I, I ain't gonna lie. Little Nas Uncle might be doing too much, right? I mean, of course, he's going to defend his, his nephew, but... Hey, man, Lil Nas doing too much. Lil Nas doing too fucking much. Yeah. What the fuck you out here? He's he doing fake pregnancy. You got a song with this nigga and all that. Yeah, no, yeah, damn he, well, you ain't got shit. He, he, he trolls a lot. He trolls a lot. Oh, fucking... You ain't got nothing better to do, nigga. Go right. do something yourself. He, and this is not the first stunt he's pulled. He's, he's pulled stunts of him being pregnant and all types of crazy stuff, so... Yeah. Okay, here we go. League executive is scouts in the NBA voted Le Lamar De I mean DeMar DeRozan to the Bulls was the worst move of the offseason. Do you guys agree with this? Do y'all what do y'all think? That's cap or no cap? Uh yeah, but that's that's a tricky question though because we haven't seen yet. You said the you said the GMs? League executives and scouts voted that DeMar DeRozan. The well, Bulls, they, this is my thing. Were they saying that because that's going to make the Bulls better? Or were they saying that because they feel like DeMar DeRozan is ass? They're saying that trade was the worst off off season. I, I mean, listen, the Bulls, from what I saw uh, last time I checked, they 4 0. So. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, so far, it's good. The Mo DeRozan, like he's doing just fine to me. Yeah, I'm going with Cap, bro. They hate him, bro. I don't like that's the Mo DeRozan, but yeah, that's Cap. We know you don't like him. Yeah, bro. Cap. Everybody agree with Cap? Yeah, I'll say Cap. Okay, here's a, here's a crazy one. Okay. Y'all know Kevin Gates? Yeah. Okay, while speaking with Wallow and Gilly on... A million dollars worth of game. 
Gates spoke about how he stay healthy, even going as far as telling the two that you know he practiced this thing called semen retention. What? Yeah, he's wild. If they want to experience a better physical health, Gates went on to say another thing I want to talk about is uh, healing your body. This is gonna sound crazy. Semen retention, not releasing no semen. So basically, you are you 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 know you going crazy on shorty, but when you're about to you you don't do that. Do y'all think this is? He capital? basically said he believes right men shouldn't ejaculate when they have sex. Right. That's yes, basically. that's a better way of putting it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And what? that shit is fucking cap. That nigga's fucking bugging me, bro. I fuck with Gates and all that, but yo, listen, your ways of doing things is your ways, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? If that makes you feel good, nigga, you do what you do, but you bugging the fuck out. The fuck? Oh, so y'all not down with the semen retention? retention. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the accent. Huh? Is it cap or no cap? Uh, we heard war. What about you guys? Bro. Square in uh... Scott, bro. Listen, okay. that man and lost his mind. He stopped if you want to edge, you get edge, because that's what that's called. Um, but the old, <laughs> yeah, like you know, oh, that's what it's called edge. Hold on, when you come, when you about this. know, when you push right. yourself to the limit when you're about to, and then you stop, and it's called that's edging. what it's called edging. Yeah, but I don't know about this re retention and it being healthy for maybe that that's like the whole goal of it when you do like. Nah, I don't know about all that, but anyway, that's where did you find that out at though? Where was that? Where did you get that information? Edge point up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the chicks talk about it. They got this chick that love dude like when dudes do that because she likes to watch their feature, their features, and how they act and stuff. And she likes to torture them and stuff. So, yeah. Oh, so it's cool. And that's really a real thing. Bro. Yeah, it's definitely a real thing, bro. You know, if we had more semen retention going on, we wouldn't have so many babies around here. Okay, we'll keep it moving, bro. Cause it's getting nasty. I. Right. Tom Brady played uh, Chief Keith Love Sosa after blowing out the Chicago Bears. Bucks are now That's six gangster. and one. That's gangster. The internet, the internet is saying Tom Brady will win another Super Bowl this year. Is this cap or no cap? Uh, very likely. Only person I thought that was going to be his comp would have been the Chiefs, and the Chiefs looking like ass. Yes, I'm going. Uh, uh huh. I'm gonna say no cap. I'm gonna say. All right, so is it cap or no cap that he's going to win a trip? Yes, yep, that's what it comes down. That's what the end of that Everybody's saying Tom Brady about to get another ring. This is a fact. They saying I'm that's say what they're saying. I'm going to say that's cap. Mm. Okay. okay. I'm going with no cap. Brady about to get number seven, bro. Why you feel like it's cap? I think there's some notable teams out there that's uh, very, very serious contenders. Mm. Mm. Like what team? Like the Rams, uh, the Arizona Cardinals. Did they beat the Rams though? I, I think mean, so. they, even if they beat the Rams, we took, this is a regular season, bro. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Uh, yeah, right. but you I'm know, not. but he gets better in the playoffs. The Rams don't. I mean, if that's the case, then the Arizona Cardinals gonna win the trip. They undefeated. So I mean, we going by the regular season. Mm. Yeah, you know that's why that's the only thing I don't like about football. I know they can't; they have to play like that because they can't play back to back games because it's such a brutal sport. But you only get one game; like that's crazy. I'm just saying, there's some talented, this, the other talented teams out there that are dangerous. I'm but saying that's all. My yeah. my caveat to that though, status is that um. Those other teams are not on the the conference, I think. So they're gonna have to play each other before they even get to Tampa. Tampa side, uh, even, <laughs> even if they play each other, they they still you know, yeah. got to play them at some point. Yeah. True. So. All right. Well, I think that's it, fellas. We are wrapping up. Uh, cap or no cap? If you got any questions, you know, what I'm saying anything that you wanna send in, you know, what I mean, let us know, man. You know. What I mean? We appreciate y'all for rocking with us. Uh, 
Happy Halloween to everybody, you know what I'm saying? Festivities and all that. I don't know if this, I, listen, I don't know if this is some shit you celebrate. I don't know if this is some shit you, I don't know what the fuck this shit is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> but, welcome to the Squid Games. You know what I'm saying? We are your hosts. You know what I mean? Of course, y'all already know I'm status, and I'm going to let these gentlemen roll it out. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so circle. Yeah, you I can, can speak, speak now, right? Okay, do I speak now? Square, can I speak? <laughs> Listen, <laughs> I can tell all you motherfuckers to shut the fuck up. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> I'm the big honcho. You feel this me? Is a fact. But you was throwing you know, all the AO parties with those guys. All, all, all y'all, know what I'm saying, go ahead. Y'all, y'all can talk, man. Do y'all they think? Ain't, they ain't see yeah, bash. Oh, they didn't see. Okay, they didn't get that joke. <laughs> you don't want to be that guy over here. I know yeah, it yeah, sounds yeah. nasty. <laughs> you don't want to be <laughs> that guy. All right, listen, ladies and gentlemen, these masks are really hot. So keep <laughs> this up right now, man. We, yo, bro, we had to wear this mask for the whole show. Hit That's the red right. button right now, man. You know what I'm saying? All jokes aside, we love you, man, and we appreciate it. Hey, man, it, listen. It's, it's a it's a marathon out of race, so we appreciate everybody that just hit this up. Anybody, you know what I'm saying? We just Bless growing, you, you know, steady growing, you know what I'm saying? Hey, so let me start off by saying follow me on uh, Instagram. Follow this gentleman right below. Oh, no, no, right across from me. You know what I'm saying? The head honcho, you know what I'm saying? If you see Squid Games, you know this man, I am status on Instagram. Yes, Instagram. Then you got the, the, the triangle. Right there, you can follow him at Strategic Films, Strategic Fit, Strategic Lifestyle, Strategic Investments, <laughs> 682 Varsity. It's a bunch of them. Just type in Strategic. Which game fit. Strategic? Right, bro. He probably made a new page 10 minutes before the meeting. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> you probably make got... a page as we speak. <laughs> right, bro. <laughs> and then we got the one and only, you know what I'm saying, the, the architect, the, 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 the designer, the 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 Google, the life coach, man, just, man, Google, man, right below, man, right he, right here, bro, he's the, the square, bro, you know what I'm saying, you know what I mean, and, uh, yeah, we make, us four make cut the cap, I pass the strategic, bro. Yo, y'all already know what time it is, man, keep sharing, keep commenting, keep liking, keep promoting, keep pushing with us, stay engaged, we always like to be engaged with y'all, let, let us know what's going on, you know, let us, we, we take all criticism, same way we doing cut the track, we give it to these artists, you know, the way that they are supposed to receive this message, you know, whether it's whack or it's not, we can do the same. Y'all can do the same to us, man. We know it ain't whack because we out here every day giving y'all this, you know what I'm saying? But we like criticism. If we doing something wrong, let us know. If we doing something right, let us know. You know what I'm saying? A pat on the shoulder go both ways. So what I do want y'all to do, if you have any comments, you know, anything, any concerns, y'all got to go to the number one spot. Number one spot to get anything to us. Yo, hit that Instagram page. Hit that DM. We all in our DMs. All four of us in, them, in that DM every day. We checking. You know what I'm saying? So please send them in. You got a topic you want to speak about? Send it in. You know what I'm saying? If you want to be a guest of parents one day? Let us know. Send it in. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to say that to say this. You know, this was the Halloween edition. Like Status said, you know, we all y'all hopes. You know what I'm saying? Y'all are our guests. And we're going to leave this right now like this like normal we know you do this on at your home on your time three two one cut, cut the, the cat. Cat. subscribe cut the cat.